Hello. In this video, I'm going to show you how to direct proof determinant of A equal to determinant of A transpose. Let's uh, review some linear algebra. So let's say I have a matrix A equal to uh, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9. Okay. And then the transpose of A is uh, you <coughs> swapped rows and columns. So it becomes 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9. Okay. So that's the transpose. And what we want to prove is the determinant of A. And equals to determinant of A transpose. So here the determinant of A is computed by we modify the three numbers one from each row. So the first one is one, five, five, and nine. Okay. And plus the second one is three, four, eight. And the third one is <coughs> two six seven. Okay. And that those are the three positive terms. And negative terms start from three times five times seven and <coughs> minus one times six times eight and minus or <coughs> Two, four, nine. Okay. So these are the six terms uh, to compute the determinant of A. So the positive term two, three, six is basically you pick the second element of the first row and you pick the third element of the second row and you pick the first element in the third row okay uh, <clears throat> so we call this a permutation permutation okay and this permutation is positive okay we uh, define the positive permutation based on the number of inversions of the permutation. So to compute the number of inversions, what you have to do is just write down one, two, three, and then close this, close this, close this. And you find the intersections or crossings. Okay, you have two, uh, which is even. If it's even, and that's what we call a positive permutation. Now let's take a look at the three, five, seven. What is three, five? So for three, five, seven, you basically you take uh, the third element in the first row, the second element in the second row, and the first element in the third row. Okay, so it's three to one. So we again we try to compute the number of inversions by write down one, two, three, and you find this, okay. So you find there are three uh, crossings or you know, intersections. And since there are three inversions, and we call it uh, odd uh, permutation, which is negative, okay. So the sign of odd is negative, and the sign of positive permutation is positive. So we can, you know, use the permutation to determine uh, the sign with the positive or negative terms. Okay, and for the notation, we use a sigma to represent a permutation. Okay, and if I say sign of sigma, then it's based on uh, the 
positive permutation or negative permutation of sigma. If it's positive, then the sign is one. If negative, then the sign is negative one. Okay. Uh, we use the notation like this. We use a one one. A one two, two A one N, and then A two one, two A, uh, <coughs> two N, and all the way to A N one, two A N N. Okay, so for the for um, n by n matrix A, we use the Nielsen machine, and the transpose. Okay. We define it using uh, this way B uh, one one B one two to B one N and all the way to B N one B N N okay and the element B I J is equal to uh, A J I uh, for all I and J. Uh, because the <coughs> B IJs are the A uh, transpose, okay. And also, we define the determinant A, okay, using the uh, concepts uh, I presented earlier. So basically, use some all the permutations. So we use this sum all the permutations sigma okay and then uh, first we give a sign of sigma okay and then we multiply all the terms together from the first row and then sigma one represent um, the mapping from uh, one to that permutation and then a2 sigma 2 and times all the way to a the row the nth row sigma n okay so that's the determinant of a so the determinant of a can also be rewritten another way so since the uh B i j is equal to a j i, so we swap uh, the index sigma one and one and change it to b, and now still remain the equal sign. Times sigma n. Now we want to find out uh, the relation between the A I J and B J I. Okay. So we know that the sigma is the permutation. So there is a one of these sigmas. That will be equal to one. So we rearrange that uh, in according to the sigmas. Okay, so sigma i equal to k. Okay, then we define a sigma inverse, the inverse function. Okay, k is equal to i. Okay, so that we can find uh, who is actually mapped to uh, one because we want uh, b i. Uh, J, you know, start from B1 something. Okay, so that's equal to sigma sine of sigma, the same permutation, and then B1 sigma inverse, okay, 1. So sigma inverse 1, sigma is 1 is 1, is, you know, whoever map uh, to 1 from the sigma, okay, so they say sigma. Okay, as they say, uh, M. You map uh, M 
to uh, one. Okay. Then sigma inverse. Okay. One. S equal to m. Okay. So that's what we want. So we want sigma inverse one here. Okay. So again, we find the second. Who you know? It's got mapped to two by sigma. And then that that is actually sigma two inverse. And all the way to be uh, n sigma n inverse. Okay. So now we have this b1 something b2 something. Okay. Uh, times bn something. That's very close to what we want. Uh, to the determinant of a transpose. Okay. Now, uh, the only thing left is the the sign. It's a permutation. Okay, and but our permutation now is a sigma inverse. Okay, and hopefully the sigma sign and sigma inverse, is, uh, and the sign of a sigma is equal to sign of a sigma inverse. Okay, so which can be fun, uh, can be you know uh, observed by this. Okay, let me I'll give you one example. So let's say I have a, a sigma of in map one, two, three, four, okay, two, uh, two, three, four, one. So this is sigma, okay. So we find out that uh, it has a uh, odd number of inversions. So the sign of sigma is negative, negative one, okay. In the inverse, uh, sigma inverse is basically, you know, we map again one, two, three, four. Okay, if we do this, so the two, 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 three, two, three, and four, two, four, and one, two, one. So you can see that uh, the number of crossings or number of inversions is remain the same. It's actually equal to the sigma. So you flip over, flip over, or uh, you will see that it's actually symmetric. Okay, so. This observation will show the sign of sigma is equal to sign of sigma inverse. So we can save it, you know, to write down to this sigma and then sign sigma inverse. Then the rest b1 sigma inverse 1, b2 sigma inverse 2. Okay, go all the way. So notice that this notation. Is to some all the permutations, okay. And since the sigma is bijective function, okay, this permutation is bijective. So sigma inverse is also a permutation, okay. So we can save it to replace this, this all the permutation to sigma inverse all the permutation, and then sigma inverse sign, and then the rest. And this is actually by definition is determinant of a transpose. And that's the proof.